It's a real man right there. Yeah, like I pushed my coach. I got I got I got suspended a couple games. I just didn't like my high school. I didn't like playing football for my high school. That's why I stopped. Um, yeah, I fell out of love for this sport pretty much because I went to that school. See, I mean, neither of them are healthy, but you don't inhale a cigar. Well, if you do, you're, you'll just get sick. You're not supposed to. Yeah. It's very bad for you. My name is Luca Atchison. Um, I am a almost a freshman at uh, Parsons. Um, I am a new New Yorker, and yeah, I uh, just just came here. I moved from California, Los Angeles specifically, um, and I moved for two reasons. One reason was because um, I uh, had some complications with my other high school, and the second reason was because I wanted to move out to New York because LA is just. It's so isolating. If you grew up there, like you'd know what I'm talking about. But if you don't really have a car, you don't know people, then you can't really do nothing. At my old school, uh, let's just say I just got into a lot of trouble and uh, things like that. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's because of just how I mean I am as a kid. I mean I'm not. Uh, I mean I'm, I'm kind of just like a wild kid. My freshman year, I came in to a Jesuit all boys Catholic school with a bleach blonde mohawk, red nails, which neither you're supposed to do so they looked at me like I was somewhat crazy. And New York is like a melting pot of people. It's, it's the most diverse place that I've honestly ever been to um, and almost the most friendly place too. Like people aren't afraid to engage in conversation or talk to you or it's a very lively, rapid paced, fun city. The nightlife has been pretty crazy. Um, I've gone out with my with my middle brother Alessandro. He's 21. Well, the box is this club in New York. It's just like a throwback to to how clubbing was in like the 80s or some shit like that. When there was like people like in fucking boxes and in like cages on top of the fucking root, hanging from the ceilings, like dancing naked and shit like that. It's it's crazy. I guess like the the appeal is like the craziness, like going out, listening to music, clubbing with a lot of people, dancing, going out, having fun. The club, the clubbing now, it has toned down a lot from from like when my parents grew up. Like they tell me so many stories. It was way crazier from back in the day. Like in uh, I think I don't even know. I think it was like Studio 54. They had like a spoon, like a huge spoon, and it was filled with coke. And they fucking like launched it into the crowd and it turned into dust. And it was like a smoke fog machine of literally cocaine. Now I got my chest tattoo when I was 15. Before they named me Luca, they wanted to name me like blue, like the color because my eyes were like a piercing blue when I came out the womb. Even the doctor was like, oh my God, his eyes are so blue. Like it's the only thing that they could talk about. So then they put that on the board. And then my dad said like, no, it's not Italian. It's not, it's not cultural. It's not like, you're not gonna call my son blue. So then they're like Luca. And then I got it tatted on me as, you know, I was like, I need a tattoo. I was like, I just want one so bad. Oh, that was, that was, that was, a, that was another story. So, in seventh grade, um, you know like roasting? Yeah. Yeah, so like, like everybody loved to roast each other. Like, I, I don't know, I, me as well. But like, it got to a certain point where it wasn't even roasting anymore. It was straight up just disrespectful. Like my mom at the time, she had breast cancer and she was doing a lot of surgeries and shit like that. And I went to a Jesuit school, like a Catholic or whatever the fuck, you have to pray in the morning, middle school. And I was like, my mom was going into fucking surgery. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna say a prayer for my mom. Like, I hope she, I hope she's good. And a kid laughs, bro. He fucking laughs. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I hope my mom like has a successful surgery and blah, blah, blah. And the dude laughs like out loud in class. And then we have P after and I, I just straight up threatened him. I was like, I'm either gonna beat the fuck out of this kid and get expelled and kicked out, or I'm just gonna threaten him and then it'll be fine. I was like, I was like, if you ever say that again, I'll beat the shit out of you or kill you or some shit like that. Cause it was some fuck shit. I was so mad. I was like, how could you say that? Or how could you really do that? Like, I don't know, bro, humanity is just fucked. But like, that was some fuck shit. I was not putting up with, but um, so I threatened him and then it got super serious. Like, 
like he was a little bitch. It was his fault. I'm not gonna lie. Like the coach got involved, and the coach is a little fucking bitch too. He's like fucking in his early 20s, and he was like, oh, he's usually chill with me too, but he was like, oh, you're you're violent, you're whatever, and then I like. We finished PE, nothing ever happened, didn't think anything of it, went to like my next period, and my homeroom teacher comes to me like mad as fuck, and she's like, meet me in the office now. And I go downstairs, and it's her and the principal, and then they debrief me, and they're like, did you say this, did you say that? And like all the threats that I said to the kid, and I was like, yeah, because he did this, and they didn't give a fuck. They were like, they were like, they were, they were just like, I don't know, they were like fucking, I have no fucking idea, bro. They didn't even give a fuck that he laughed at my, at me, at me literally praying for my mom's like to get better. But they were, they, they like kicked me out of school from right then. And then the, literally the next day, the next morning, like five or six cop cars show up in my house in the morning while I'm eating breakfast. And I go to the door because I ring the doorbell and it's three police officers. And they're like, are you Luca Atchison? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, you need to come with us. And I'm like, no. And I close the door and they put their hand like on the door. They're like, you need to come with us. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I was like, can we speak to your parents? And then I was like, yeah, let me get my mom. Because my mom was the only person at the house at the time. And then like apparently like they, they linked like firearms to the house, which is just not true because they looked up the wrong name. So that was also fucked. So I got cuffed like in my house, got That's brought weird. out of my house to a cop car I'm like mom was crying and everything. It was, it was, it was funny. Yeah, they like handcuffed me outside of my out of my out of my crib. They drove me to Delaho or some shit. It's like mental institution, 72 hour hold. It was honestly a fire experience. I'm not even yeah, gonna cat, go. bro. You have to walk you through like seven doors because like it's a psych ward. They can't let you. Leave. <clears throat> they can't let you leave. Um, so they sit me down in a chair and like debrief me, write some paperwork out for me, and check me in. And then they try to do like this initial thing with every patient where they like get your blood and give you medication. I denied all that shit. And I was like, I'm, you're not taking my blood. You're not giving me any medication. You're not doing shit. I'm not like, I'm not a mental patient. I'm not anything. So I like just denied everything that they tried to do. Um, they like, sent me with like a doctor like to talk to or whatever to like explain my situation and he was siding with me um, and then I pretty much like was sent back into like where everyone else is I roomed with uh, two other kids one kid was uh, like a suicidal suicidal patient like he it was everybody told me about their story bro this was this was honestly like a great experience. I'm not even cap to you. Like some people, like when they go to psych work, they like you know flip out, whatever the fuck. I was having the time of my life. <laughs> like this one kid, uh, and they were all happy for some reason. Like a lot of kids were in there for like drug, like serious drug addiction or like suicide or like whatever. But they were all chill. Fuck. And one kid looked like a model. He was like six two, fucking no, like bro, his face was like, like sculpted. Um, and I was rooming with him and this other kid, a little, little bigger. That kid, he like told me he threw himself out of the car, at, like on the freeway to try to like kill himself, didn't work. Um, another, the, the kid I was with said like he like had a substance abuse issues and like had like did a lot of pills and shit like that. And I was talking to everybody. I was talking, cause I was like, this shit is so boring. Like there's no, nothing to do, nobody to talk to you except like, other people and like the 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 staff. <laughs> yeah, we got to play like basketball and cards and the regular. <laughs> the hardest thing I've probably ever done in life, in my 19 years of life, I've gone through like a lot of shit. Like I've been arrested out of my own house. I've been to a psych ward. I've been through a lot of shit. But honestly, when it comes down to it, breaking up with my girlfriend was the hardest shit that that has ever happened to me, bro. Cause when you when you end when you end a four year relationship, I don't know, bro. It, it does some it does something else to you, bro. Like when you let go of some something you actually love that much, like I don't know, it changes you, bro. It changes you. You 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 grow up. I don't know. I still feel like a kid, but I don't know, bro. I was with her for four almost five years. Definitely thought like, you know, 
it was gonna be like a marriage type situation, but you know, you know, you can't you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? Life life ain't perfect.